How do you know if your illustration work is good or not? You might love your work or you might hate it, but what do others really think about it? Your friends and family might say it's good, but what if they're just being nice? In this quick little video, I'm gonna to attempt to answer these questions. It's in response to a question that came to me today, and I think it's actually an important question and it's a very reasonable question. But first, welcome to the channel. My name is Tom Froze, and I'm an illustrator and a top teacher on Skillshare where I've helped over 100,000 students unlock the world of commercial illustration. If you find anything meaningful in today's video, I ask that you please hit like and consider subscribing. This is the best way to support what I'm doing on this channel. This episode is brought to you by Astropad Studio. If you're looking into getting a tablet for doing your illustration work and you already have an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, you might wanna give Astropad a try. Just like dedicated screen-based illustration tablets, Astropad Studio lets you draw, paint, and control your desktop-based illustration and design tools with your iPad and Apple Pencil. People often ask me how I use my iPad to control Photoshop on my Mac, and of course, the answer is Astropad Studio. Astropad lets you set up unique customized controls and gestures for all your apps. Astropad also guarantees low latency performance over Wi-Fi or USB cable, which means that what you're drawing on screen happens instantly on your Mac. Today, Astropad is used by major animation studios and product design firms across the globe. If you're ready to take your creative workflow to the next level, you can start your free 30-day trial of Astropad Studio today. Visit astropad.com to get started. Thanks, Astropad. Just before we get into the content, I'm excited to announce I'll be hosting a live stream on March 11th called Ask an Agent, where you get to hear from a real live illustration agent and ask them questions in real time. Have you ever wondered how agents decide which illustrators to take on? Are you wondering if you should pursue an agent yourself? Maybe you'll have questions about how much of a cut they take. I hope that you can join us for the live stream, which will be hosted on Crowdcast. The event is for my patrons only, but of course anyone can become a patron starting at just $3 monthly. Visit patreon.com slash tomfroze to join. I'll be sending more updates on Patreon as the event approaches. Okay, let's get into the content. I'd like to read the question that came to me just for some context. So she says, at the moment, my biggest problem is how to critique my own work and understand if I'm doing it well. How can I know if it's worth people looking at it? How do you know if you're good enough? I've had people tell me that it's great and then others would tell me that because I haven't had a proper art school education and I can't draw a Greek sculpture, I'm no good. Simply put, I don't know how to see if I'm good enough. What do you think? Now, I totally understand this person's predicament. We all want a clear sense of where we stand in our abilities. We all want to know what others really think about our art. We all have this insecurity about ourselves as artists. At least I know I do. In response to this person, I said that it's true that having a proper art education sets us up for more success in our work. Like any learned skill set, Learning them through formal study is just one of the surest ways to go. I mean this not only in terms of developing technical skills, but also in terms of being among teachers and students who will give us the kind of feedback we need in order to grow. We begin to gain a sense of where we stand through the feedback of others. As self-taught illustrators, this is just a reality we must contend with. Of course, I believe that we can learn illustration on our own, but it does present certain challenges, especially in finding people who uh, we can trust to intelligently critique our work. So in response to the person who came with this question today, I asked her, where will you get meaningful feedback? And when you get it, whose feedback will you accept? Will you accept those who say your art is great or those who seem to say otherwise? Who are the people you'll be able to trust whose feedback is the most valuable. So of course, it, it, it doesn't need to be an either or. I don't think it's like we reject all positive feedback and only accept critical feedback or the other way around. I think it's less about what that feedback is and who's giving it. Personally, I absorb and treasure all positive feedback, but I also don't trust it 100%. I really value critical feedback more than anything else. I don't accept all critical feedback, but I highly value feedback from people I know are in a place to give it. 
For instance, I trust my wife, who's often critical of my work, but I respect her opinion as a good designer and someone who shares similar tastes with me. You know, even people who say my art is terrible, whose opinions I probably should just ignore, I can accept some of this feedback as a challenge. And then sometimes I can just accept it as a dose of reality. You know, not everyone is gonna be a fan. So we may not always get feedback or the kind of feedback we want or feel we need when we want it. But maybe more important than whether others like your work or not is the question, do you like your work? What kind of work do you enjoy making the most? What gives you the most joy? What do you want to keep doing and building on and improving on? What are the things you struggle with most and how can you work to improve on them? Another important question is whether you like your work or not, does the work work? Does it do what you set out for it to do? Does it meet the brief or the criteria of the assignment? At the end of the day, we may not always like the work we create, but as illustrators, the goal is not just to make work we like, but work that works according to the intended purpose. This is the true job of a professional artist. What proof do you have that your work is either working or not working? We can't always know what others really think. So we have to be content with other kinds of feedback. First, we can check off the list of objectives in our briefs or assignments. We can go through the brief or whatever the assignment is and say, is our illustration doing this? Yes or no. Is our illustration doing that? Yes or no. Second, we can look for proofs that are more objective than our feelings. Are clients coming to you? Are you being paid to make your art? What do your clients say as you work with them? What sort of feedback do they give you on your ideas and your artwork? Whether it's positive feedback or critical feedback, is the feedback you're getting from client to client consistent? Is the kind of things that people are saying kind of always around the same issue? That's a clue of either what you're doing right or what you need to be improving on. Another place to look for proof that your work is working or not is in your crit groups. What are your peers saying? When you share work online, what are people saying in the comments? You know, apart from these things, I suggest that you seek out a professional portfolio review, such as those offered by 3x3 Magazine or looking up other options online. 3x3 does reviews for $45 and I think it's well worth it. I'll just say it's not easy to hear critical feedback on our own work, but if we go in with a learner's mindset, we'll learn so much about how others view our work and how and where to improve ourselves. The intuition of seeking feedback is correct. Asking, how do I know if my art is any good, is an important question to ask. The next step is just to decide what work you want feedback on, and then to formulate specific questions about it, and then boldly and humbly seek it out. Seek out this feedback. As you seek feedback and aim to grow in your work, I would encourage you not to ask the question, am I good enough? Instead, ask yourself, how do I get better? People who relentlessly pursue this question will be far more than good enough. All right, guys, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please do like, subscribe, and all that jazz. My name is Tom Froze. You can find my classes at tomfroze.com teaching. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.